today's topic of uh, discussion is the continuation part of the biostatistics this is part 3 which is uh, dealing which we are dealing after sampling now the data has been collected and we need to present the data so this can be presented in the form of tables in the form of diagrams or in the form of any graphs now let us see each one in detail the first one is the tabulation once the data is collected it needs to be presented so when you uh, present it in the form of a table uh, you have different types in them the first one is the simple uh, table or one way table here the data is tabulated based on a single characteristic here in this particular exam you can see the bds students are being uh, tabulated depending upon the year in which they are studying single characteristics two way table has two characteristics so here we have age and gender two characteristics at a time so they are divided based on age and gender whereas the complex uh, tabulation consists of many characteristics so you here you have age gender their kd status and periodontal status now this is how a uh, tabulation is done the next thing which we have is diagrammatic representation this is most commonly used for qualitative type of data under which uh, we have one dimensional diagrams and two dimensional diagrams but first, first let us deal with the one dimensional diagrams under which we have the bar charts so under uh, this the first one is the simple bar chart which represents with a single variable so here in this diagram you have a single variable bds students divided based on their year in which they are studying next comes the multiple bar charts so this diagram is similar to the uh, simple bar except that you have many variables so here you can see you have two variables that is their age and the gender so this is how a multiple bar diagram looks like next comes a component bar a diagram here the individual bars are divided into two or more parts as you can see here they are divided uh, based upon their gender and also how in uh, how many students in each year percentage bar diagram is the same as that of component only that the information is presented in the form of percentage so this is about the bar diagrams uh, in the one dimensional now the next one is the two dimensional diagrams under two dimensional diagrams the first thing we have is the pi diagram so these are so called because the entire graph looks like a pi and its components represent slices that are cut from a pi so the total angle at the center of a circle is equal to 360 degrees and each uh, part of this fragment they represent the frequency uh, so here uh, each um, number of individuals according to the year they are studying is been represented with a particular angulation so this is how a pi uh, diagram looks like next one is the pictogram pictogram is nothing but small pictures or symbols are used for presenting the data so they are especially used for the common man to understand so in here in this diagram you can see the representation of doctors available per thousand people now the next thing is the graphical representation so what is this graphical representation uh, it is most commonly used for quantitative data so the first thing we have is histogram which is a pictorial diagram of frequency distribution this is not to be confused with the bar chart because this has space uh, this does not have space that has space now frequency polygon is a pictorial diagram of frequency distribution here to draw a frequency polygon a point is marked over the midpoint of the histogram blocks and all these points are connected by straight lines next thing we have is frequency uh, curve this is also similar to frequency polygon the midpoints of all bars are joined but with the free hand so they are not joined with a straight line they are joined with the free hand when they are joined with free hand it is curve if it is joined with straight line it is a polygon frequency polygon so this is how is a graphical representation is done now let us see the methods of summarization so methods of summarization are the measures of central tendency under which we have mean median and mode the first one is the mean this mean is obtained uh, by summing up all the observations and dividing the total by the number of observations so this is what is a mean which you can also call it to be an average of all the observations that are made so this mean is uh, given by the following formula or it is being calculated by the uh, following steps so there are different uh, observations so they may 
range from the x1 x2 x3 to number of observations so the mean of this particular entire uh, observation would be the summing of of all observation divided by the total number of observation now coming to the advantages of mean is that uh, this mean it is rigidly defined and it is easy to understand and easy to calculate because it is just uh, the average of all the observations that have been uh, seen and not only that it is based upon all observations not a single observation uh, uh, not you're not basing it only one single observation you are considering all and it is amenable to algebraic treatment so these are the various advantages or merits of mean uh, coming to the demerits or disadvantages of mean is that it is affected by extreme values that is uh, suppose you have values 2 4 6 8 and all of a sudden you have a value of 2000 the average entirely will change change with just one extreme value so it is affected by extreme values and if one observation is mean missed you cannot calculate the mean and it can't be calculated by inspection that is just by inspecting you cannot collect the data so these are the various uh, advantages and disadvantages let us take an example here so you have uh, the data uh, uh, given for the plaque scores in about 5 students so we need to calculate the mean for this how do you calculate you add all the plaque scores and because uh, you have the plaque scores of 5 individuals you divide it at 5 and here we get the mean plaque score of 5 students that is 1.4049 now uh, that we have seen uh, the mean the next thing is the median the median is nothing but it is the middle value or the frequencies after arranging them either in the ascending or in the descending order that is whenever you get the data that is the observations you need to arrange the data either in an ascending order or in the descending order and the middle value that you select when you arrange these that is known to be median so median is nothing but size of the n plus 1 by half the item if n is odd number suppose you have odd number uh, then median divides observations exactly into half that is middle exact the middle one you can consider it to be median but if it is even then median is the mean of the middle two terms so you will have two middle terms you have to take an average of the two middle terms and that would be your median this occurs if it is n is even number now let us see the merits or advantages of the median so this is also easy to understand and easy to calculate it is just you have to arrange in ascending or descending order you can and you have to just select the one which is present in the middle and it is not affected by extreme values so previously we have seen mean is affected but this is not affected by extreme values because you have values such as 2 4 6 8 and all of a sudden you have 2000 though you ascend it in uh, though you arrange it in ascending or descending you select only the median middle one so these are the advantages coming to the disadvantages uh, it is not based upon all observations because you are not considering all observations right you are only selecting the one which is present in the middle and it is not amenable to algebraic treatment and it is affected much by fluctuations of the sampling so these are the various advantages uh, uh, and disadvantages of the median now uh, let us see uh, this with an example so the same example we will take so you have the plaque scores of five individuals and uh, we need to calculate the median for this five uh, plaque scores so uh, whatever data of the plaque scores is given here this uh, plaque score is arranged uh, in an ascending order so after uh, is arranging it in ascending order because here the total number of the sample is 5 so which is an uh, odd number so exact middle one you can select it to be the median score so here you are arranging it in the ascending order 0 0.9834 1.0267 1.1267 1.5634 1 and 2.3245 so the median is size of the n plus 1 by half item so size of the uh, is uh, sample is 5 so 5 plus 1 divided by 2 that would be 3 now the third item is considered to be the median which is 1 plus 1.14 
0.267. Now the next thing is the mode. So what is mode? Mode is one which is the most repeated in the particular series of observations. So you have a numerous number of observations. Uh, the one observation that is mostly repeated that is known as a mode. Uh, this mode can also be defined as it is the value of the variable which occurs more frequently in a series of observations. So this is the uh, mode. So is not based on any mathematical uh, calculation but it is that observation that is most frequently seen. Now uh, let us uh, see the advantages and disadvantages of this particular mode. So this is an easy uh, to understand and calculate way and uh, it can be calculated by graphically also. So not by arithmetical means it can be calculated given by graphical means and it is not affected by fluctuations of the sampling and it can be calculated both from qualitative and quantitative data. So these are the various advantages of the mode. Now coming uh, to the disadvantages of the mode. So this is not based on all observations. So similarly to that of the median here you are not uh, here also you are uh, confined to only a uh, few observations that are frequently observed uh, frequently occurring. So so this is also based on only few observations and not all observations are considered and in some cases mode is ill defined. Now let us uh, understand this by taking uh, or by seeing an example. Now here uh, we have the data so we are asked to calculate the mode uh, from the following plot scores that are given. So you have 1.25 uh, you have a 3.10 0.95 0 0.75, 1.81, 1.81 and 2.72 and 2.50. Here the one which seems to repeat a lot is 1.81 which is repeating two times. Therefore the frequency of 1.81 is 2 and the value of mode is 1.81. So this is how you calculate uh, the mode. Now the next thing is um, when the mode is ill defined that is you do not have that repeating feature. So now let us see this with the help of this uh, example. Now the following data gives the plaque scores in 5 uh, students and we need to calculate the mode plaque scores how you have seen in the mean and the median the same information. So you have 5 uh, plaque scores here but we need to calculate more. But as you can see the information that has been provided here there is no repetition in the observation of the five so if there are no repetition you cannot calculate a mode no it is not like that whenever such situation that is whenever mode is ill defined we use the following relation in order to find the answer that is mode is equal to 3 median minus 2 mean so here uh, because we can calculate mean and median from this right so 1.1267 and 0 0.9834 uh, are repeated two times and if mode is ill defined mode is calculated by mode is equal to 3 median minus 2 mean. So 1.1267 is repeated 2 times and even uh, 0.9834 is also repeated 2 times. Now the next thing is the measures of dispersion. Under measures of dispersion we have range, mean deviation, standard deviation, coefficient variation. So measures of dispersion are nothing but measures of variability of observations which uh, helps us to find how individual observations are dispersed around the mean of a series. So this is the measures of dispersion. Previously we have seen um, what we have seen the thing was the mean median and mode. These are the measures of dispersion which have the range. So this range is nothing but it is the difference between the highest and the lowest values in the series. Now you have uh, many observations under them when you arrange it in ascending and descending order when you uh, uh, subtract the highest value from the uh, high, uh, highest value um, subtract lowest value from that of the highest value you get a range. So 
this is the uh, simplest measure of dispersion and it is not based upon all observations again only the maximum value and the minimum value is selected and here it is based on extreme values and it is affected by sampling fluctuations. so this is the first uh, measure of dispersion that is the range which is calculated by subtracting the uh, minimum value from that of the maximum value and it is uh, affected by sampling fluctuations now moving uh, to the next one um, that is uh, example how uh, do you find the range of the information that has been provided so find the range of incubation period of small pox uh, when we administered in nine patients and it was found to be so the information given here is 14, 13, 11, 15, 10, 7, 9, 12, 10 in days. Now here the maximum value that we have from the information that is being provided is 15. Whereas the minimum value is 7. So we need to subtract 7 from 15. That is 15 minus 7. The range would be 8. Now moving to the next one that is the mean absolute deviation or mean deviation. So it is the arithmetic mean of the deviations of the values from a measure of central tendency without taking plus and minus signs into consideration. So here this is an arithmetic mean but you do not consider the uh, plus and minus signs into consideration when you calculate this uh, absolute mean absolute deviation or the mean deviation. So how is this uh, mean absolute deviation or mean deviation is being calculated Suppose we have a variable that is x and n is the number of observations and uh, the x uh, is the mean in which it is given by the uh, mean deviation is calculated by the sigma of the uh, variable minus the mean of the variable divided by the total number of the sample. So that indicates ignoring the negative signs because you are not taking into consideration the plus and minus signs in the mean absolute deviation. So the advantages are it is simple and easy to calculate and it is easy to understand and it is based upon all the observations. So here all observations are taken. Now coming to the disadvantages. This is mathematically illogical because here you are not considering the plus and minus signs and it is not amenable to the algebraic treatment. So these are the various advantages and disadvantages and the formula for the mean uh, deviation. Now let us uh, calculate it with the help of an example. So what are the steps that are involved in calculation first we need to calculate the mean then we need to calculate the deviation that is x minus the mean then we need to find absolute deviation absolute deviation is nothing but the two lines in between so you will neglect the positive and the negative signs now we need to find the sum of the absolute deviations and we need to divide it by the number of observations now let us see with this with the help of an example so the following data uh, gives the respiration rate per minute and we need to find mean deviation so the first thing what we do is we need to calculate the mean so the mean for the, all these respiration rates is 20 after calculating the mean we need to find the deviations the deviations uh, after finding out we need to find absolute deviations that is ignoring the plus and minus sign then we need to add all the absolute deviations and you after adding the absolute deviations we must divide it with the number of observations the number of observations are 9 so the answer is 2.44 now the next one is the standard deviation what is standard deviation standard deviation is nothing but it is the square root of the variance or it is defined as the square root of the mean of the squares of all the deviations being measured from the mean of the observations it also tells us how the various uh, data is dispersed that the observations how they are arranged or how they are dispersed uh, that is uh, being uh, understood from this standard deviation now let us see with this 
when you have a low standard deviation you have all the observations uh, towards the mean so the central line that we have is the mean so you can see it has very high that is when you have low standard deviation all the observations are towards the mean whereas uh, when you have a high standard deviation the um, values are dispersed in a uh, far bit farther where that is away from the mean now coming to the um, formula of the standard deviation so it is uh, for small uh, samples it is n minus 1 for large samples it is uh, divided by n now in this also the first thing is we need to calculate the mean after that we need to find the deviation after finding the deviation we need to square uh, the deviation and we need to uh, sum the squares of the deviation and the square root of the sum of the squares of the deviation divided by n minus 1 is for small samples and square root of the sum of the square root of the de mean deviations is for divided by 9, n is for large samples. Now let us do this with the help of the same uh, example previously as we have seen for the respiration rate. So the first thing again here is we need to calculate the mean. After calculating the mean the next thing we do is uh, finding out the mean deviation. Uh, then after finding out the mean deviation we square the mean deviations and we add all the square deviations after adding the square deviations here you do the square root of the mean deviations uh, divided by n minus 1 because this is very small sample that is only total 9 so square root of 60 divided by uh, n minus 1 is 9 minus 1 so square root of 7.5 you have 2.7386 is considered to be your standard deviation so this is how you find out standard deviation now let us see outline of what we have learned here in this particular continuation topic after sampling we have seen how uh, the various methods are involved in presenting the data the tabular form or the graphical form or the diagrammatic form then under methods of summarization we have measures of central tendency that is the mean a median and mode um, then after mean median and mode we have the measures uh, of the dispersion under which we have seen the range and standard deviation thank you